I'm Bob Duhamel and today we are going to talk about electrical connectors. Electrical connectors are simply used to connect one electrical circuit to another or maybe connect a battery to a circuit or something like that. We are going to take a look at some of the most common electrical connectors and learn their names and any special characteristics we need to learn about them. So the first one we're going to look at is the venerable fan stock clip. This is pretty much obsolete but it's still used in classrooms and for other demonstration circuits, probably because it, it's kind of obvious how it works and how you're making contact uh, to a circuit with it. It is made by a single piece of metal that is stamped in a certain way that it has interconnecting contacts, and you push it down, that opens up a hole where you can push in a connector and let go, and it makes contact with it. Second type we have here is a very common connector called a banana plug. And I guess it's called a banana plug because it's kind of long and skinny like a banana, but it's not curved, but banana plug is what it's called. And as you can see, there are styles that have uh, both a plug and a socket together, so you can have multiple banana plugs uh, daisy-chained on top of each other to make your connection. These are very common in test equipment. And here we have a double banana plug, which is also fairly common. This is called either an RCA connector or often called a phono connector. Now there's two types of connectors that sound similar. There's the phono connector and then there's the phone connector. This is the phono, meaning phonograph. And this is the type of connector that's used in the back of stereo equipment to connect different components to each other if you have a multi-component system. Also used to connect video and audio for video systems, at least the older ones before such connections as uh, the HDMI came out. It is a type of coaxial connector, which means it has a one connector that surrounds the other, and it's made so that the outer connector is grounded so that it acts as a shield to prevent noise from getting into the inner wire from electromagnetic radiation or magnetic fields, and also prevents uh, energy from the inner wire from escaping. It acts like a Faraday cage preventing energy from escaping or energy from coming in. Your RCA or phono jack we have here, so these are phono plugs, these are phono jacks, and the jack is what the plug plugs into and has the same characteristics. Notice we have a number of different color codes which mean different things. Here we have uh, the most common where we have audio and video. Video is yellow, and then the audio we have red for the right channel and white, sometimes black, but usually white for the left channel. And we have other colors that mean other things uh, to different systems. The schematic symbol for the phono plug looks something like this. We have a ring and a connection coming through, and this ring is often shown as grounded. I'll show a chassis ground in this case. And so we have a circuit coming through, the grounded ring, and then the center connector of the RCA plug. And then the RCA jack looks similar, a ring often grounded, and you might see a connection that looks something like this. In fact, the plug might have an arrow on it to show that that's the plug, and the jack has a little receptacle on it to show that it's the jack. Now we come to the phone plug, which is called a phone plug because it was used in the old phone switchboards. So we have phone plug here, and we have phono plug here. So the phone plug is uh, usually has two connections. It's a coaxial plug with one connection going down the inside of another. But sometimes we have a stereophone plug. As you can see, there's actually three connections. We have the outer ground and then the left and right connection on the inside. So we have outer ground. Next connection is either left channel or right channel. And then the last connection is the op other channel. This was also used in phone circuits. And you might hear people talking about phone circuits where they talk about tip, ring, and sleeve. And that's the names of the different parts of the phone plug. We have the tip, the ring, and the sleeve of the phone plug. Of course, we have the matching phone jacks to go with the phone plugs. And there are two styles of these. Well, of course, there's different types. There's single channel stereo, and some of them actually have four different contacts. But some of these have a switch inside, so when you plug the plug into the jack, it breaks contact with part of that and this would be used such as for earphone connections where you have a speaker on a radio. Of course, they're common on phones these days too, where with the headphones not plugged in, the sound comes through a speaker, but then you plug in the headphones, it breaks the connection, and so the sound only goes through the headphones. There is no standard schematic symbol for the phone plug, so I'm not even going to try to draw it because I'd be making it up as I go along, but there is a symbol for the phone jack. Looks like this. 
a rectangle with a connection coming off of it, and the center connector looks like pretty much what it is, a thin piece of metal that's somewhat springy with a shape on the end that captures the phone plug. So the phone plug captures into this indent, or should I say the indent on the plug captures into this uh, shape here, and there's the phone plug plugged into the jack, and there's a bit of insulation there, so there the inner connector connects to the tip, and the outer connector connects to the ring, and there's your standard phone jack. Let's redraw that without the uh, plug in place. If there is a switch inside, such that when you plug the plug in, it breaks the circuit, that would look like this. So there is a phone jack with a switch. Now, if this phone jack is a stereo jack, it will look something like this. So that this contacts the indent around the tip, this would connect to the ring. So if we try to draw this, let's see if I can do this. Uh, it could be worse. It's actually terrible, but it'll do. So there's this one contacting the tip, this one contacting the ring, and then the outer part contacting the sleeve. So that would be a three connector circuit or a stereo, your typical stereo headphone. Of course, this is what was in the telephone system also with our tip, our ring, and our sleeve. But let's uh, redraw that again without the plug inside. And so there is your three circuit connector. And these can also be made with a switch, but I don't want to get too complicated here. You can figure them out if you see the particular circuit. So there can be multiple switches in there, and there can even be four circuits instead of three. I've never seen one with more than four circuits, but maybe there are. So that is your phone jack. The next connector we have is the alligator clip, or sometimes called a crocodile clip. We have alligators in the States, so we call it an alligator clip. In other parts of the world, they have crocodiles, so they call them crocodile clips. And I don't think I need to explain why they are called alligator or crocodile clips. No particular schematic symbol for these. The next one here we have is what's called the DIN connector, D-I-N. And that stands for Deutsche Institut für Normung. We'll just call it a DIN, D-I-N. And it can have uh, anywhere from two, three, five or more uh, connections on the inside. This was used a lot for microphone connections in the past. Still is used for microphones. Was used for computer keyboards for a while. Here we have the BNC connector, and BNC does not stand for British Naval Connector. BNC does not stand for Bayonet Net Connector. I've done a lot of research on this because I really was curious about it. I finally found uh, on an official source the Amphenol website, and they are one of the makers of this type of connector. In fact, they are one of the inventors. BNC stands for Bayonet Neal Consulman. Neil and Consulman were the two engineers who invented the connector. And it's a bayonet connector means that you give it a push and a turn and it locks into place. And this is used for uh, VHF frequencies typically. It's also used on oscilloscopes for connecting the probes to an oscilloscope because they often use high enough frequencies to make it appropriate. It's a coaxial connector meaning that it has a one conductor surrounding the other, which acts as a Faraday cage to protect the center conductor from interference and to keep radiation from leaving the center conductor into the surrounding uh, uh, area. This is a rather interesting connector. I'm showing it because it has multiple types. It has a B and C on one end, and on the other end it has some binding posts. So these are knobs that you can see the holes in there. You can put wires to the holes and connect these binding posts down. And binding posts often is not uh, have banana plugs on the end, so it can either accept a banana plug or it can accept wires that are connected down by turning the binding post. Now what we have here is called a D sub connector, sometimes called a D type connector, and it's called that because the shell is somewhat shaped like the letter D. And it can have either sockets in there or pins in there depending on the type. In the computer industry they have a number of types of designations called DB9, DB15, DB whatever, meaning however many pins are in there. 
and they call it either like a DB9F, meaning that it has sockets or female connector, or DB9M, meaning it has plugs or it's a male connector. But I've only seen those designations used in the computer industry. Actually, DB is a designation developed by Hewlett Packard for only one of these connectors, and they have DA, DB, DE, DF all the way through the, the alphabet. I think I missed DD. And somehow DB was picked up in the computer industry and they call them all DB connectors. But in the electronics industry, we call them D type or D sub type connectors. Here's a variety of different types of lugs. We have spade lugs, ring lugs, and fork lugs that are used for various types of connectors. These are usually crimp on used in uh, wherever they are appropriate to use. Here's another fairly common connector. It's called a coaxial power connector. And these come in different sizes and types so that they can be keyed so you can't plug the wrong type into the wrong place. And we have a plug which sort of has a socket within the plug. So it plugs into the jack and then the jack has a plug inside which plugs into that. So we have a connection where we have a plug with an insulating area here and then another connection on the inside. So when we plug that in, it connects on the outside and then has a, another plug that goes in there. So it's kind of a plug into a jack and a jack into a plug. And once again, the size of this hole in the middle is different sizes so they can be keyed to make sure you don't plug the wrong one into the wrong place. Here we have two connectors that people tend to call by the same name. Everybody calls these Molex connectors, but only one is actually the Molex connector. You can see the one on the right is the Molex. The one on the left is the AMP connector. Very similar, very similar application. And like I say, at least in the computer industry, people keep calling them Molex connectors, whether it's a Molex or an AMP. But these are used, uh, once again, wherever appropriate. They were used in computers for the connections for the power to the hard drives and to CD-ROMs and such, but they are obsolete now. You won't see these in anything except older computers. But in electronic devices, they are still fairly common. Here we have a circuit board with an edge connector. So we have the edge socket and the edge connector on the circuit board. It's obvious what it does. You connect the circuit board into the receptacle and you make a connection. Now I've obviously just scratched the surface here, but these are the most common types of electrical connectors that you will see. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.